Stephanie Carroll, the unhinged historian here to give you a book recommendation. For those of you who watch my vlogs, you know that I like to give book recommendations for historical fiction and specifically historical fiction that has a touch of magic, darkness, or just something generally bizarre. So today I'm actually presenting you with a technically a YA novel. Um, but you know what, nowadays, what kind of adults don't read YA novels? You know, Harry Potter, Twilight, I forgot what it was called for a second. YA no novels are actually becoming quite well read by adults. And this one, even though it's YA, it to me seems like kind of some adult, certainly looks like an adult cover. And no, it's not a sex novel. Uh, but the cover is called A Great and Terrible Beauty, and it is by Libba Bray. I have to admit that this cover is what stopped me and made me want to look at this book. Um, I can't believe that I looked at it and it just so happened to have magical elements. You know, it's hard. It's pretty hard to find historical fiction, especially just randomly when you're not trying to find it. But um, yeah, it has some magical stuff in it. And it's actually part of a series, is what I discovered. There's three books in this series. And I just love this color cover. It is so intense. It's great. Great and Terrible Beauty. And I'm sorry, I forgot what the series is called. Maybe it'll say on the flap. Delacorte Press. Jim and Doyle isn't like other girls. Girls with impeccable manners who speak when spoken to, who remember their station and dance with grace, and who will lie back and think of England when it's required of them. No, 16-year-old Gemma is an island unto herself, sent to the space, sent to the Spence Academy, in London after tragedy strikes her family in India. Lonely, guilt-ridden, and prone to visions of the future that have an uncomfortable habit of coming true, Gemma finds her reception a chilly one. She's not completely alone, though. She's been followed by a mysterious young man sent to warn her to close her mind against the visions. For it's at Spence that Gemma's power to attract the supernatural unfolds. There she becomes entangled with the school's most powerful girls and discovers her mother's connection to a shadowy, timeless group called the Order. It's there that her destiny waits, if only Gemma can believe in it. A Great and Terrible Beauty is a curl up under the covers kind of book, a vast of canvas of rustling skirts, a vast canvas of rustling skirts and dancing shadows and things that go bump in the night. It's a vividly drawn portrait of the Victorian age, a time of strict morality and barely repressed sensuality, when girls were groomed for lives as rich men's wives, and the story of a girl who saw another way. Great and Terrible Beauty. Libba Bray is the author of five and a half plays, a few short stories and essays, and lots of things that, in her words, should never see the light of day. She has worked as a waitress, a nanny, a burrito roller, a publishing pleb, and an advertising copywriter. Raised in Texas on a steady diet of British humor, underground bands, suburban dysfunction, and bad TV, she somehow managed to escape with only a few seriously deranged haircuts. She lives in Brooklyn, New York, with her husband and son. Jacket photography by Michael Frost. Jacket design by Trish Parcel Watts. Author photograph by In Galisa Schrobsdorf. And Delcourt Press is a imprint of Random House Books. So I thought that book looked interesting. I like that it's set in Victorian times because, you know, my books are generally set in Victorian times. And it's got a little bit of this, um, you know, it sounds a little bit like The Secret Garden or a little princess, you know, where she starts out in India and tragedy befalls her, she has to go to England. And then, you know, she goes to this private school that's a little bit like uh, Jane Eyre. Um, but then we get this stuff about, you know, future visions and somebody warning her to not follow them and then a secret order and her mother's shadowy involvement. And it just sounds, it sounds interesting to me. I've only started reading the first couple of pages because lately I've been working like crazy and haven't had a lot of time to read at night. But so far, it's, it's alright. Like I said, I haven't really read very far. I'm one of those people that I generally, you know, it doesn't, it takes a lot for me to get hooked, so 
you know, the first couple pages probably won't do it for me. How about... Well, after the first chapter, I'm guessing something bad happens in the first chapter because I just skipped the second chapter and it says London, England, two months later. Ooh. I don't know what happened, but it's probably bad. Oh, it's chapter three. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. I guess I can read a little bit of it for you. How about I skip to the middle? I'm not one of those people who likes to skip to the back. I skip to the middle. Chapter 15. Can you believe that he brought me red carnations? Do you know what that means in the language of flowers? Admiration. I admire you. That will certainly win a girl's heart. Pippa is tearing the carnations apart one by one and sprinkling the colorful carnage, carnage over the cave floor. I think carnations are rather nice, Anne says. I'm only 17. My season has barely begun. I intend to enjoy it, not be married off to the first posse old barista with money. Barrister? Pippo rips, rips away the rest of the carnation in her hand, revealing a naked, nubby stock. I haven't said a word. I'm still smarting from the nasty letter this afternoon and the fact that Felicity is wearing one of Pippa's new gloves while Pippa wears the other, like badges of their friendship. Why is she such in a hurry? Why is she in such a hurry to see you married? Anne asks. She doesn't want anyone to know. Pippa stops, stricken. Doesn't want anyone to know what, I ask. What they're getting before it's too late. She tosses the flower stem to the ground. I have no idea what she means. Pippa is beautiful and her family may be merchant class, but they are well-to-do and respectable. Other than being vain, obnoxious, and subject to romantic delusions, she's all right. What do you do with your s when you're the with a suitor? Anne asks. She makes a little x in the dirt, X's in the dirt with beheaded with the beheaded carnation. Pippa sighs. Oh, it's generally the same. You have to frown frown over them after they bore you to tears with some story about a legal case they argued. You had to lower your eyes and say something like, My, I had no idea the law could be so fascinating. Mr. Bumble. But when you put it that way, why, it's just like reading a novel. We fall over laughing. No, you didn't say that, Felicity Howells. Pippa is losing her mopey air. Oh, yes, I did. And how do you like this one? She bats her lashes and adopts a sweet, shy demeanor. Well, perhaps I can manage just one chocolate. This has me laughing in spite of myself. All right, well, whatever I just slipped to isn't the most fascinating moment, but they're in a cave. That's kind of weird. It said she ripped off the carnation stems and dropped the petals on a cave. That seems strange. Uh, I was trying to see if I found something interesting. I didn't. <laughs> I think the book sounds interesting. I'm just not having very good luck finding it while this chihuahua is running around and bugging me. It's making it difficult for me to concentrate. So, okay, now I have a second chihuahua. Okay, so that is A Great and Terrible Beauty. I recommend it. I think it sounds interesting. And um, if you like these blogs, blogs, Check my blog out at http colon slash slash unhingedhistorian.blogspot.com And if you like the books that I recommend, you might like Coco and you might like um, the stuff that I write. So check out my website www.stephaniecarroll.net And follow my blog to get all the latest updates and beauty shots of Coconut here. Say bye bye Coco. He ruined my vlog!